chapter 11, Made in Germany. Clayton Bishop raises pigeons, but he says they're for food. Do you know anyone else in town who has pigeons? Jill asked Corey. No, I didn't even know Clayton Bishop had them. He's new around these here parts. I'd love to set the bird free right now to see where it goes, Jill said. It's probably well enough to fly. I'd like to be sure it's healthy, so I think we should wait a few days. What do we do with the message when we set it free? Corey asked. If we attach the capsule to the bird, we may be helping the wrong guys. If we don't send the message back with the bird, someone will know the pigeon was intercepted. We won't do anything yet, Jill said. In the meantime, we can find a German dictionary and look up that word. I got an idea, Corey said. How about us sneak it into Clayton's yard and seeing any of those pigeons have bands on them? Jill frowned. Oh, Corey, if he's involved and finds us snooping around, who knows what he might do? And besides, I didn't notice any bands on the birds when I was there. You can go up to the widow's walk every day and watch where he's going. Who goes to his house? Corey suggested. I can spy on everyone from up there. If anyone is up to something bad in this town, we'll flush him out. Jill, this could be dangerous. I know. I can understand if you're scared, Corey. I ain't scared. But we might be stirring up a hornet's nest. Well, I am frightened, but I intend to find out what's going on even if I have to do it by myself. It's my patriotic duty. Now, are you going to help me or not? Corey gritted his teeth. Okay, I'll come over afternoons when I'm done at the grocery. Pa owns some mighty strong binoculars. You can spot a flea on a field mouse with him. (laughs) You can loan me a pair, or he'll loan me a pair. Don't you dare tell him why, Jill cautioned. You remember your promise. I'll tell him we're bird watching. That's the truth. Who's bird watching? (laughs) Nana had come back from painting. How much had she heard? We thought it might be fun to watch birds from the widow's walk. Jill said quickly. Do you think we could see those cute little birds that look like clowns? Oh, you mean puffins? You might be able to spot them on the sides of cliffs if you have strong binoculars. I may have some good field glasses in the house somewhere. That's swell, Nana. It'll be such fun to list all the birds we can spot. Oh, by the way, Corey is taking me to the clam bake on Saturday. Sounds to me like you made a lot of plans, Nana smiled at Corey. Now, you go on up to the widow's walk while I search for those glasses. <clears throat> After Nana went into the house, Corey picked up the inner tube and put it into his bicycle basket. This inner tube ain't no good. Too many patches. I'll try to get one at Guy's store tomorrow. They're hard to find with the rubber shortage and all. Thanks, Corey. You want to go up to the lookout now? Jill nodded. Let's go. Inside the house, Nana was at a desk in the parlor. I found the binoculars, she said, handing them to Jill. Take those folding chairs up with you, Corey. She pointed to wooden chairs with striped canvas seats next to the closet door. Your grandmother's nice, Corey said as they settled themselves into the chairs on the widow's walk. Jill put the binoculars to her eyes and adjusted them. These are swell. I can see right into Mr. Bennett's grocery store. You could watch me working every morning when you're up here. Let me try them. Corey took the binoculars and gazed out to sea through the heavy lenses. Aha, uh-huh, he said dramatically. Hey, there's a filly loo flying around. A what? Don't get to see many filly loos in these here parts, Corey said. Let me see. Jill reached for the glasses but stopped when Corey laughed. What is a filly loo? You're poking fun at me. Corey grinned and nodded. A filly loo is a make believe bird that flies backward to, backwards to keep the wind out of his face. We tell the summer cater bird watchers to be sure to watch for the Philly Lailu. He handed the binoculars back to Jill, who looked them over. Hey, look, Jill pointed to some engraved words on the barrel. Zeese, made in Germany. Where did Nana get these field glasses? Zeese binoculars are probably the best in the world. You can't get them anywhere since the war. German products are off the markets. How do you know so much about it? Because my pa talks about lenses all the time. The lighthouse uses big lenses to magnify the light it sends out. 
I've heard him mention Zeiss lenses dozens of times. They're a German company that makes cameras and binoculars and telescopes and stuff like that. How did Netta get these if they're not for sale in our country? Maybe she got them before the war. But these look brand new. Corey looked through the glasses again. There's that bishop guy now. He's driving off in that old car of his. Let me see. Jill took the glasses and watched the car zoom down the road in a cloud of dust. She could see Clayton Bishop turn into town and park at Mr. Burnett's store. He's at the grocery store. Let's keep a record of everywhere he goes. You're not suspecting Guy Bennett of being a spy, are you? Corey raised his eyebrows skeptically. Just because Clayton Bishop is, is buying groceries at a store, I'm not suspecting anyone. Yet. Jill glanced across the channel at the lighthouse and the rugged house where Corey lived. Maybe we should set up some way of sending messages to each other at night. Corey burst out laughing. Just use the telephone for crying out loud. Jill flushed. I suppose. But there might be an emergency sometime, and we do want to keep all this a secret. Okay. If ever anything is wrong, signal to me from the widow's walk with a flashlight. I'll know it's you, if I happen to be looking this way. That is, Corey chuckled again. It's so funny. I'm beginning to think you believe this whole spy thing is stupid. Don't get riled up. I'm just teasing. I've got to go over to home now, but I'll stop by the library on the way to see if I can find out what that word sonaban means. You stay here and keep an eye on Clayton Bishop. I'll go to the library with you. I have no, I'd go to the library with you, but I have no tire on my bike. I'll get it fixed today, Corey promised. Corey, don't ask for a German dictionary at the library. You'll have to look for it yourself. Stop worrying. I'll keep my mouth as tight as a clam. You'd better, Jill warned. If anyone finds out what we're doing, we could be in real trouble.